Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. Last week I found an issue with the engine installation aboard Athena. There was an electrical connection between the sail drive, which is this thing poking out the bottom of the hull, and the engine, which in this case is a Volvo D240F from 2009. After a little bit of head scratching, I got the engine and the sail drive pulled apart so I could remove the plastic insulators as well as the little plastic bushing. All those doohickeys are right here, but they are only one part of the puzzle. I got a bunch of comments asking, but how can the sail drive be electrically insulated from the engine when there's a shaft via a spline connecting the two? So it turns out here inside of the flywheel housing, there's a flexible coupling. On this exploded diagram, that flexible coupling is number 33, and that is what insulates the shaft of the sail drive from the engine. And indeed, if I poke at the spline in here, there is no connection between the spline and the engine. That's good news, because that makes me believe that the flexible coupling is not the culprit, which is nice because it's a $500 part that I would hate to replace. So I believe one of these is the culprit. Now it might be something as simple as this metal washer here being turned the wrong way around over this plastic washer here. It could also be something as simple as this tear in the other plastic washer. I'm hoping replacing all of these plastic parts is gonna solve the issue. For once, Volvo was not super expensive with their spare parts. I believe this little pile of plastic here represents about $50 hairs worth of parts, which is certainly not dirt cheap, but if it fixes this issue, then I will be thoroughly pleased. It is pretty frustrating when you order spare parts and you don't get what you've ordered. I ordered two of this one, but I've only received one. Fortunately, this little doohickey goes on the outside, so I can still put the sail drive and the engine together today, then I can call my friendly Volvo dealer and have them mail me the missing one. And it kind of balances out last week where I ordered one of these little molded hoses here and I got two, so it's kind of like a lottery. I've cleaned the two mating surfaces and I've taped the little plastic doohickey here in place, just because there's only one of me here and I can't really hold this while trying to guide the engine in. Attempt number one. I fully expect this to be a somewhat fiddly process. I ended up getting Martin to wiggle the sail drive a little bit while I was pushing on the engine, but the two are now bolted together, so uh, let's cross our fingers. Remember, any value above 100 kilo ohms is acceptable, so let's see. Using my trusty old Fluke 15, I am getting somewhere right around 30 mega ohms. 30 mega ohms is a ton better than the 100 kilo ohms that was mentioned in the instructions, so uh, yay! For the couple of people that were doubting that this was actually in the instructions, this is page 12 of the official installation instructions. Check installation. Connect a measuring device to the bolt on the upper housing and the grounding connection on the engine. The result should be above 100 kilo ohms. If measured value is below 100k, the installation needs to be reviewed. I think we can go ahead and consider this installation reviewed. The astute will remember that all of this started because I got a comment reminding me to check that the sail drive and the engine were still electrically isolated after I'd installed the control cables. And the initial culprit was this control cable. As you can hear, there is an electrical connection between this part of the cable and this part out here. And the reason this looks a little bit funky out here is because there's a rubber grommet in here that's supposed to electrically isolate this cable from the engine. When securing the stationary part of this cable to the engine using these official Volvo parts here, there was a connection between the cable and the engine because of this top metal washer here. The bottom washer here, that is plastic. So I think if I just move the control cable to the inside hole here, it shouldn't create a connection between the sail drive and the engine anymore. Both the control cable for the engine and for the sail drive are now connected. And I am still seeing around 30 mega ohms worth of resistance. 
There are only a few more things I want to take care of here before I'm ready to fire up the engine again. One is to clean the expansion tank. Number two is to replace this little piece of molded hose back here. As you might be able to see, it's very cramped. As you can see, this is a third party stainless steel exhaust elbow. So that might be why this is a little cramped. But uh, let's see if we can do better. Using a little bit of brute force, I cut away the old hose and uh, this does look like a very tight fit. So I might have to temporarily remove the exhaust elbow. I couldn't help but notice that the new hose, it says Perkins right on it. It's like Volvo is not even trying. If memory serves, getting the old hose on the exhaust elbow was very difficult in that cramped environment. So I figured it was easier to bring the exhaust elbow out here and then worry about this connection afterwards. I'm just gonna apply a tiny bit of lube. I need all the help I can get. I think we can all agree that this looks a lot better than before. I'm probably gonna take the exhaust elbow off of the engine again once Athena's in the water, because there was one of the guys from the marina, he mentioned that he had somehow galvanically separated the exhaust elbow from the heat exchanger, which would be awesome to do. But for now, I just wanna focus on getting Athena back in the water. I've got this beautifully molded piece of very expensive hose that's gonna fit underneath the expansion tank and back to the coolant pump here. But before I fit this, I would like to just clean the expansion tank a little bit. There's a bunch of, well, rusty crud for a lack of a better word in here. I don't know what the best way of dissolving that is, but uh, I'm gonna try with some oxalic acid. It took about an hour. I made a 10% solution of oxalic acid. I believe that's what it's called in English. And I just let this sit for half an hour and then I rinsed it out thoroughly. And I mean, this thing looks brand new. Maybe brand new is kind of pushing it, but it's a lot cleaner than it was before. For those playing along at home, that is just shy of a hundred bucks saved. That is the cost of a new expansion tank. We're getting to the point where all I need to do to be able to run the engine is to connect a bunch of hoses one of those being the exhaust hose. That means it's time to fit an exhaust through hole. I temporarily closed the hole from the old one before I started painting. This is the exhaust through hole I've chosen to go with. I've got one that's identical to this one for the generator. This is going to connect directly to this waterlock or gooseneck that also acts as a little bit of a muffler. In the setup aboard Athena, I'm gonna have a muffler or waterlock directly aft of the engine. And then I'm gonna have the one I just showed you, which is gonna be connected directly to the through hole. It looks like it's not gonna be raining for maybe 10 seconds. So uh, let's go ahead and drill a hole. This should be a nice snug fit. I've measured and these 30 millimeter bolts should be almost perfect. And uh, don't worry about the little bit of paint on the cover coat. I can easily sand that away when I activate the cover coat. I've done a quick check inside of the boat and everything looks good. So uh, let's apply a little bit of sealant to this thing. I am almost sure that Sigaflex 591 will bond to this rubber. If it doesn't, it's okay. It's above the waterline and I can easily rebet the exhaust through hole. Now for the part where it would have been amazing to have had an extra pair of hands, tightening the nuts on the inside of the hole. Well, that accounts as today's exercise. The through hole is now installed. I wasn't gonna do this because the generator is not working yet, but through the magic of repeating the same task twice, I put in the exhaust through hole for the generator also. And I think it looks pretty dang spiffy. Sure, the hull would look better without, but I need them. And by tucking them into this area here, that's kind of slanted. If you see the boat from a normal angle, whether that be up on a dock or aboard another boat, you're hardly gonna be able to see them. I'm losing the light pretty fast, but this is what those two water locks look like here in the cockpit locker. And yes, yes, I know, two hose clamps on each, but uh, the ones I ordered were the wrong size. I still need to epoxy in place some kind of support behind the water locks, but uh, I'm hopeful that I can get everything connected up tomorrow and maybe get the engine fired up. So uh, fingers crossed. I've ordered a spiffy Optima red tub battery for the new starter battery. 
but unfortunately that won't get here until Monday. So for now, I'm just going to use the old house bank batteries. Okay, well, I'll just let this sit for a few hours while I connect a bunch of hoses. Actually, before I start connecting anything, it would be nice to get the engine and the engine compartment all cleaned up because it's very dusty. This looks so much better better. I've removed the two access ports on the tank. I've done that so that it'll be easier for me to attach all of the fittings I need to be able to get diesel in and out of the tank. To seal around the fittings, I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite 577. Now I don't have all of the pickup tubes yet, but the only thing I'm going to be missing is the return and the pickup for the fuel polishing system. The pickup tube for the fuel polisher is gonna have a little piece of hose at the end so that it gets into the very bottom of the tank. That means I can make it a little bit shorter so I should be able to fit that even with the ports in place. This pickup tube is the one that's closest to the center line of the tank and the boat. So I'm gonna use this one for the diesel engine. The next pickup tube is gonna be for the generator. And then finally out here, we have the diesel heater. This is the forward access port. We've got the pickup for the engine, pickup for the generator, pickup for the diesel heater. This is the aft access port. We've got the return from the engine, return from the generator. This beefy one here is a vent and this is a fill. The tank located behind the engine is the day tank. That's the one all of the consumers are hooked up to. The fill on that is only gonna get used for emergencies. Normally the diesel that enters the day tank comes from one of the other diesel tanks. And when it does that, it's gonna pass through a water and fuel separator. Also the diesel that's in the day tank is gonna be continuously polished. So the diesel that's in there is guaranteed to be absolutely free of water and any debris your nastiness. It's about four hours later now. This is quite the fiddly process. I've put the lids on the tanks, as you've seen, and I've also connected the pickup and the return. And I've also connected the anti-siphon loop. Now, this doesn't look super neat yet, but uh, we'll get there. I think the only thing I've got left to connect before I can fire up the diesel engine is, uh, well, the exhaust hose. The exhaust hose is definitely the hose I've been looking forward to the least, just because it's kind of stiff and difficult to maneuver. Slight change of plans. Turns out the old muffler that came with Athena, which I was hoping to reuse, has a 45 millimeter inlet, but a 50 millimeter outlet. I've got 45 millimeters throughout everything, so I can't really use this. Initially, I thought about just replacing this to a 45, but turns out the previous owner had a heck of a time just fudging this thing thoroughly over. So yeah, no, I'm not gonna reuse this. Fortunately, I've got this one, which I was planning on using for the generator. It's a little bit of a different design, but it should serve the same purpose. The silver lining is that this will actually make for a neater installation because this thing just fits snugly behind the engine. I got the exhaust hose all connected and I've picked up 80 liters of dinosaur squeezings. Needless to say, that deck fill arrangement is very much temporary. I just haven't figured out exactly where to put the deck fill yet. I think the next step is to get all of the air out of the system. Instead of adding coolant to the engine, I'm going to be adding distilled vinegar, just temporarily. The plan is to fill the freshwater side of the coolant system with vinegar, not just to make the engine smell horrible, but in the hopes of knocking loose some rust or other contaminants inside of the engine. I'll leave the vinegar inside of the engine for a couple of days, then I'll flush it with fresh water, then flush it with demineralized water, 
then I'll add the coolant. I can't flush the engine in this week's video, so you guys are gonna have to wait until next week to see what kind of crud comes out of the cooling system. The battery is now connected. The very last thing I need to do is to figure out some kind of replacement for the raw water. Athena's bilge is squeaky clean, so I'm gonna fill that with a garden hose and then I'm gonna use that for cooling. I'm not going to be running the engine for long today. I just want to get it fired up to see that it still works and also to get that vinegar circulated throughout the cooling system. That's probably going to be the last time I'm happy to see that amount of water in the bilge. I think if we slightly loosen one of the injectors it should be easier to get the last bit of air out of the system. Okay, here we go again. Ta-da! A working engine! Woohoo! And also what appears to be a working coolant system. Woohoo! I am gonna go ahead and call that a resounding success. These are the tasks I would like to complete before putting Athena back in the water in three weeks. Let's go ahead and move the reconnect the engine into the doing column because I only need one more thing to finish it and that thing should show up Tuesday. We're at the point in time with this project where I'm gonna have to adjust scope to meet my deadline so I'm just gonna remove the bulwark and tow rails task. I can do that with the boat in the water. It's not crucial. It was something I would like to have done, but I can just as easily do it with the boat in the water. The tasks that are over here are nice to have tasks, so I don't really care too much about those, but these four tasks here, including the two that's in the doing column, I definitely wanna finish before putting Athena in the water. I'll get the new prop, if not next week, then the week after. The same goes for the new standing rigging. Activating the cover code is just a matter of doing it, but uh, I'm not looking forward to that task. And then finally servicing the mast and rewiring the mast. I've already got this big pile of super exciting stuff for rewiring the mast. There's a futuristic looking wind instrument from Garmin that's gonna go at the very top of the mast. There's a brand new Garmin Phantom 18 radar. There's a new VHF antenna, a bunch of coax cable, electrical cable, and a mast headlight. I'm hoping that I can get the mast cleaned, serviced, rewired, and get all the new spiffy electronics installed next week. Once Athena is back in the water, my top priority is going to be to get the heating system installed because, well, winter is coming. Once that is taken care of, then I'm going to install the 12 volt system so that I can have some lighting here aboard the boat, which is going to make shooting video a lot easier. And then I can slowly start adding electronics, which I know a lot of you guys are really looking forward to, as am I, so yeah, I think this winter is going to be very exciting. But for now, I need to keep my focus on the to-do list here so I can get Athena back in the water and as I've mentioned, next week that entails servicing and rewiring the mast and uh, fitting all of these exciting electronics. So uh, yeah, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope to see all of you guys back aboard Athena next Sunday for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!